Hi everyone, Mr. Holtgren here. Going to talk to you today a little bit about the modern atomic theory. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on maybe some stuff you already know about um, atoms. Okay, so you hopefully know at some point in your science career you've learned about protons, neutrons, and electrons. We're going to get into that a little bit more today. Um, but you know, throughout history, we kind of have had an understanding that the stuff that's around us, right? Your pencil, my coffee mug here, your everything is made out of particles that are smaller, right? Little pieces that um, somehow make up uh, everything that we see. Um, now, in the past 200 years, our view of that atom has really changed a lot. And that's what this picture to the right here is showing, is kind of the progression of how we have changed and learned our understanding. And this was all done through um, scientific exploration and doing experiments, right? So we're finally at a place now where we have a good idea and it's kind of, this model here, and we'll, we'll show you one a little bit later. Um, but it kind of has changed, so we're going to kind of look at that a little bit. Now, for the discovery of these individual particles, we'll look at the electron first. Now, technically, we kind of, over 200 years ago, had an idea of kind of what a, not a, necessarily a proton, but we knew that they were these little tiny um, particles that had a positive charge to them. Um, now, from that, we were able to do a lot of other experiments. One of the experiments we did do was this guy, J.J. Thompson, and what he did is he developed a, a device that he could sh uh, shoot this little beam of kind of mystery particles through, okay? And he knew it had something to do with positive and negative charges, but he shot this beam through, and what he was able to determine is, if you notice in this animation here, he changed the charge, so it would be positive and negative, and then negative, positive, and alternated it, and what he was able to determine was that this beam, this mystery beam of particles, was attracted to the positive charge. Now, if you remember your charges, right, um, like charges um, repel and opposite charges attract. So positive is attracted to negative. If you have two positives, they repel. Two negatives, they repel, right, if you've played with magnets before. So from this experiment, because this beam was deflected toward the positive that led to the conclusion that, well, this beam of particles, these particles must carry a negative charge, okay? The other thing that was uh, he figured out was because this beam really deflected a lot, a lot more than alpha particles or the other the positive particles that they knew about, these really moved a lot. So that led them to the conclusion that, well, these particles must have tiny, tiny, tiny little mass. And what they found in this experiment, this was the discovery of the electron. Okay, so electrons do carry a negative charge. Now, where they exist, they're in these electron clouds. We'll always use pictures, and you'll see pictures of, and even this picture shows electrons kind of orbiting around the nucleus, like planets going around the sun. That's not really what's happening. Um, the electrons exist in these energy levels, in these clouds around the nucleus, um, but they're probability clouds, meaning that you can't ever really look and see, hey, the electron's right there right now, and it's right there right now can't really do that. It's kind of like if you've seen um, The Avengers, right, um, or Ant-Man, the movie, they talk about the quantum realm and you go down there and weird stuff happens. That's kind of what they're playing with this idea is if you could get down to the size of an electron, you could exist in or go from one place to another place without actually moving. You could teleport instantly. So really weird stuff happens down when you get to the size of an electron, okay? Um, and with these, they do have a mass, but it is tiny. It's so tiny, we basically say electrons have no mass, okay? Um, so electrons are negative on the outside, and they have very little mass. Now, the discovery, the discovery of the proton um, kind of really came earlier than this, but Ernest Rutherford, which we've already talked about, uh, he did the gold foil experiment, right? And they thought... Or he thought, remember, originally because the model of the elect of the atom was this plum pudding blobby model with a positive charge and negative um, all inside of it. They thought that the particles, the alpha particles, would be deflected away. But what they actually found, right, was that it went through. And very rarely or occasionally it hit something in the middle. Um, so from this experiment, the really two discoveries of, of this was really the um, the nucleus, that's the big idea, and atoms are mostly empty space, and then the nucleus has these positively charged particles that are all crammed together in this tiny little uh, nucleus, okay? So Rutherford, it was really the discovery of the nucleus, but with that came the protons. So now again, protons, what are they? Positive charge, right? Located in the nucleus, 
they have significantly more mass than electrons do. Okay, But again, it's still such a tiny amount of mass. We don't really measure protons in grams because your number would be like 0.000000. They would go on for a long, long way. So instead, what we do is we've come up with just a term that we use for the mass that we call it an AMU, an atomic mass unit. So we say protons have one atomic mass unit. Okay. And then protons are important because they're going to determine what type of element it is. It's kind of like the thumbprint or the fingerprint of the atom. Every element has its own unique number of protons. Okay, so that's kind of an important idea. But here's a problem. What they were doing in this experiment is they, they knew at this point, so for example, they knew that carbon had a charge of positive six, therefore it had six protons. But when you take the mass, like if you could take the mass of that carbon, it had a mass of 12, okay? So that didn't really make sense because we have like, all right, we've got six protons, but it has this mass of 12. So that led to this hypothesis of there must be some other mystery, some other type of particle in with the protons to get it to be this mass of 12, okay? So that's kind of what led to our next set of experiments, and that was the discovery of what neutrons are. And this was by this guy, James Chadwick, in the 30s. And he was actually a student of Ernest Rutherford. And what he was doing with his experiment is, it was kind of like the gold foil experiment. He shot a beam of protons at this big, thick layer of beryllium, okay? And they knew that the beryllium had um, four protons in it, um, and what they did, though, is they he shot these um, alpha particles, or the protons, at this layer of beryllium, and it kind of deflected out these other mystery particles. And when these, these mystery particles went through that kind of the same charged thing that um, they did with the discovery of the electron, J.J. Thompson, it went right through, okay, regardless of positive or negative charge. So with these particles, they knew that they were about the same mass as protons, but they had no charge um, at all, okay? So that then is what led to the discovery of the neutron, okay? So the neutron are neutral. They don't have a charge. They are in the nucleus along with the protons, and they're about the same size, okay? So we just say that they're the same size. Um, it's not exactly the same, but for our purposes, we say it's the same. So they have one atomic mass unit, the same as protons. So it's kind of like a proton, except it doesn't have a charge. Protons positive, neutrons are neutral. Okay, the number of neutrons can vary between atoms. So um, you know you can have a carbon that has six protons. You can also have a carbon that has um, eight neutrons. Okay, so the protons will always stay the same for an element, but neutrons can be different. So they can just kind of weigh different amounts, and we'll talk more about that in a few days. And what neutrons really do is they act as the glue that keep those positive protons together. Because remember, protons are positive, so they're not going to want to stick together. Um, but the neutrons, um, we call it the strong nuclear force, kind of keeps everything together. So big picture here, what, what do atoms look like? Atoms and electrons, they don't look like this. Okay? And that's, we'll use pictures like this a lot because it's easy to see. But what it's actually, what we're really looking at here is it really looks like this. It's kind of this cloud view um, where these electrons are in a probability cloud around the nucleus. So just don't get confused. When we show you pictures like this, we use it because it's easy for our brains to understand. But in reality, it looks more like this. And in 2013, we were able to use a quantum microscope to get a picture of a hydrogen atom. And this is just showing um, the basically showing you this right here. It's showing you that electron probability cloud. So um, anyway, that's it for today. If you guys have any questions, obviously, you know, shoot us an email or be sure you uh, get in contact with your teacher.